Good afternoon. Uh, pursuant to Rule 10.01, I'm calling this meeting of the Property Tax Division to order. Uh, the first order of business is to do a roll call. The clerk, Mr. Peterson, will take the roll. Chair Joaquin? Present. Vice Chair Gomez? Present. Representative Hurtas? Representative Anderson? Anderson, present. Representative Becker Finn? Present. Representative Fisher? Fisher, present. Representative Green? Present. Representative Hassan? Present. Representative Her? Representative Marquardt? Present. Representative Mortensen? Present. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, present. Representative Torkelson? Present. Representative Hurtas? And Representative Her? That concludes the roll call and there's a quorum, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to note that all the committee documents for today have been sent to members and are on the committee page on the House website. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for March 22nd, 2021. Chair Joachim, have you had a chance to review the minutes? Yes, I have, Madam Chair, and I'll move the minutes for March uh, 22nd. Uh, Chair Joachim moves the minutes for March 22nd. Are there any questions on the minutes? Seeing none, we'll move on to a vote. Um, we could just unmute ourselves and take a quick voice vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes as submitted, please unmute and say aye. 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 The motion is approved and the minutes are adopted. Um, okay, so today we're going to hear our division report, uh, which is, it's a delete all amendment to House File 1735. Chair Joachim, would you like to move House File 1735 before the committee? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I'd like to move House File 1735 before the committee today. Excellent. And you have uh, an amendment? Yes, Madam Chair, I have a DE1 amendment. That is the division report that we walked through on Monday and had public testimony on, as well as member questions. So I'd like to move the DE1. Oh, so I have it coded as A210106. Is that, am I, is, is my agenda wrong or is? No, that's correct. It's a delete okay. all amendment that's coded okay. A21-0106. Okay, cool. If anybody else was uh, confused, then. That's what that's the code on the top. Um, <laughs> Representative Yuaki moves that House File 1735 be referred to the committee on taxes and moves the A21 uh, 0106, aka the DE amendment. Uh, so, members, this is our division report. We heard it on Monday. Um, procedurally, we need to adopt this so that other amendments are in order. We're not sending it anywhere yet. So, all those in favor of adopting the DE amendment, please unmute briefly and say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Chair Joachim, do you have a... Chair Joachim, you have another amendment? Yes, I do, Madam Chair, and thank you so... Oh, what was that? I might have been muted when I said the motion was adopted, but the amendment <laughs> was adopted, so... Sorry, you thank, have another amendment, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for correcting my mistake too that I moved the wrong numbers. So um, now we have the House File seven, House File 1735 before us as the division report, and I have the A4 Authors Amendment I'd like to walk through and put before the committee. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Chair Joachim moves the A4 Amendment. Are there any questions on the amendment from members? Seeing no further questions, all those in favor of the amendment, please unmute for a moment and say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Next, we're going to move on to member amendments. Um, first, um, Madam Chair, can I briefly go through the, what we put in the A4 amendment? Just we haven't had nonpartisan staff walk over it yet. Yeah, my apologies, Madam uh, Chair Joachim, please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Um, this is my author's amendment to clean up a few things. Staff will walk through the amendment in a moment, but I wanted to mention a few of the more notable changes. 
I've listened to the concerns from the bankers, credit unions, and right realtors regarding my House File 1311, the bill that um, had uh, energy improvement assessments. In the author's amendment, I have scaled back the projects that can access this tool. So the bill now only includes residential buildings that have five units or more, as well as commercial property. I've also added a requirement for the municipality to notify the mortgage lender of the assessment request, as well as language suggested by legal aid. Folks are now satisfied with the changes I've made. I was you know, very disappointed that we had to drop smaller residential homes, but that's something we can talk about in the future. Um, I've also removed House File 1843 from um, the division report that was Representative Carlson's bill regarding Excel energy depreciation. I removed it at the author's request because there were multiple concerns voiced by the Department of Revenue. Additionally, there are changes to Representative Beckerfin's 1812 that have been agreed upon by stakeholders and I believe she'll have an author's amendment as well. And there are changes to Representative Dabney's House File 1066 that the stakeholders requested to tighten up the language. And finally, there's some clarifying and technical corrections to the last provisions, a few TIF bills, and a few other bills that had uh, uh, just technical changes too. I'm now gonna turn it over to House Research to go through the author's amendment in detail. Uh, I'm not sure, Mr. Swanson. Yeah, please, please proceed, thank you. Madam Chair and members, um, included in the um, committee documents is a memo from uh, from House Research staff that um, just outlines all of the changes in the A4 author's amendment. I'm just gonna walk through uh, the sections that are outlined in that memo, but if you're interested in following along, it is on the, the committee webpage. Um, the, first, um, the first few changes within the A4 amendment are on lines 1.3 to 1.14 of the amendment. And these are changes to um, Representative Beckerfin's um, bill that provides an exemption for uh, a few properties owned by the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe in Cass County. Um, this change just uh, changes the refund portion of that section so that uh, it is only the state general tax that is being refunded under the bill rather than the local taxes as well. Lines 1.15, 1.16, and line 2.8 change the effective date for the manufactured home class rate change. Um, this was House File 1095, and it moves that effective date out one year to taxes payable in 2023. Lines 1.17 and 1.18 remove an, an ambiguous sentence that resulted from the changes to the homestead application date provision. Uh, lines 1.19 and 1.20. Uh, clarify that fire protection special taxing districts must meet the qualifications um, for certain fire uh, state fire related state aids. Um, this is just to ensure that um, no aids are being paid to any district that doesn't actually qualify for the aids. Uh, lines 1.21 and 1.22 just correct um, some statutory references within the fire protection special taxing district section of the bill. Uh, lines 1.23 to 2.7 of the amendment uh, limit the energy improvement project assessments on residential property to five, to those with five units or more. And this is the, the piece that Representative Joachim just mentioned. Line 2.9 uh, corrects an incorrect clause reference. Lines 2.10 to 2.13 of the A4 amendment. Uh, just removes a sentence that indicates the loss provision is in addition to existing local taxes imposed by special law. Lines 2.14 to 2.19 of the amendment add a sentence that indicates um, that the loss provision is in, in, in addition to existing local taxes imposed by special law. Line 2.20 of the amendment clarifies that the excess increment that should have been previously returned to the county auditor um, is still considered unobligated increments available for transfer. Line 2.21 of the amendment uh, deletes section one of article six. And uh, again, this is something that Chair Joachim just mentioned. This was the Carlson bill on the uh, depreciation calculation for wind and solar energy conversion systems. So this, this line just removes that sec section from the division report. Lines 2.22 to 2.28 of the A4 amendment uh, are the changes related to the tourism improvement districts. 
and line 2.29 of the amendment uh, just clarifies that uh, some of the information that's required for the 4D study uh, needs to be reported by the counties to the Commissioner of Revenue. And Madam Chair, that concludes the, the changes in the A4 amendment. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Swanson. Members, are there any questions for um, staff or for Chair Yuakim on the A4 amendment? My apologies, we already voted, but I do just want to ask if anyone has any comments or questions. All right, um, seeing none, next we're going to move on to member amendments. Uh, first, we have the A7 amendment from Representative Becker Finn. Representative Becker Finn, would you like to move your amendment and explain what it does? Yep, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I will move the A7 amendment. So this is a, a change from when we heard a House File 1812 just last week, which was the bill from uh, the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe and some of the complications with a mis, uh, miscategorization of some land that was then taxed for a short time. And um, I'm happy to report that the, the band was able to reach agreement with the local county and township and uh, have agreed essentially, and I don't want this to go unmentioned that uh, the Leech Lake Band will essentially they will be taking on the extra cost for this error that was not the fault of either the band, the county or the townships, but the band has agreed um, to not uh, try to get those funds back uh, from the townships to sort of recognition of the, the challenges that would be involved there. So um, I've reached agreement on that. Um, the, the general fund levy would stay in as well as uh, then fixing this issue going forward as far as the categorization of the property. And so I uh, would ask for member support. Great, thank you for all your work getting everyone together on that, Representative Becker Finn. Chair Yuakim, did you have any comments on the A7 amendment before we go to member questions? No, uh, Madam Chair, Representative Becker Finn, thank you. I'll echo the statements of bringing everybody to the table and getting an agreement. Um, we're kind of like ships passing in the night. Most of this we also have in the author's amendment. I believe lines one, line 1.5 four was the only thing that is not included in the author's amendment, but it's always good to make sure we dot all the I's and cross all the T's. So I definitely accept this as a friendly amendment. Great. And members, you might have, I don't know, I don't know if this got sent out yet. There was another um, updated version of the Cass County memo, I believe that had um, all but one, maybe I'll let Representative Becker Finn maybe explain that because she's nodding her head. Representative Becker Finn, I just wanted to note quickly that that um, was posted um, on the committee website, but Representative Becker Finn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, so if you remember last week, we had a, uh, a resolution from the Association of Cass County Townships uh, who had some concerns about the bill as originally drafted and um, they passed a new resolution uh, saying that they uh, passing a resolution saying they're supportive of this new updated list. Thank you, Representative Becker Finn and uh, Chair Joachim. Uh, Representative Green, did you have a question on the amendment? Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Actually, the, the question of the amendment was answered. I was wondering why they were doubled. Uh, but the other, the other concern I have is not on the bill at all. It's that um, I don't know if anybody else is having the same trouble, but I'm only hearing about half of the, of what uh, uh, Chair Joachim, excuse me, Joachim, and also. Uh, Representative Becker Finner saying it's like they fade out. Is anybody else having that same problem or is it me? I'm not having that problem. I don't know if any other members are. Okay, it must be my connection then. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Representative Green. Members, are there any further questions on the A7 amendment? Seeing no further questions, if we could unmute for a moment. Um, all those in favor of the A7 amendment, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Um, next, oh, we've been joined, I just wanted to note, we've been joined by Representative Herr and have we been joined also by Representative Hertas? Yes, so next we have the A8 amendment from Representative Hertas. Uh, Rep Hertas, would you like to move your amendment before the committee and explain what it does? Thank you, uh, Chair Gomez. And yes, I'd like to move the A8 amendment. The uh, amendment uh, uh, members, uh, when I first uh, introduced this, <clears throat> my goal and intention was to 
treat all manufactured housing uh, similarly and to compress some of the property tax classification. Uh, after we have visited this, I got some feedback from uh, Department of Revenue and uh, there were interactions unintended as they were that involved uh, property tax refund, uh, the veterans exclusion and also the market value exclusion. And in order to fix that, it would become necessary to further amend the language in each of those sections of law. And in uh, talking with uh, House Research and the Revisor's Office, it could be done, but it's going to require quite a bit of extra work and uh, needs to be uh, further thought out. So in trying to not scrap this effort completely um, in conference last night, uh, we found out and determined that one way we can still uh, kind of incrementally move forward with what I had intended to do is to treat all of the land underneath manufactured home parks uh, the same and compress those classifications so that they would be taxed at the same rate as well. Uh, members, some of the land under home parks is taxed at 0.75, some at 1.0, and some at 1.25. So there will be additional time uh, between now and end of session, uh, whether conference committee or in the final tax bill, if we uh, choose to address some of these other issues that I identified were problematic. But as it stands right now, the 888 amendment deals with now only the land under manufactured homes. It does not affect the land under home uh, manufactured homes owned and homesteaded or occupied on private land uh, by a manufactured homeowner just under manufactured home parts. With that members, um, legislating is sometimes incremental and this is one of those examples and uh, it will benefit 46,000 manufactured home sites across the state. So I still uh, ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Hurtas. Uh, Chair Joachim, did you have any comments on the A8 amendment? Um, I just want to say um, thank you for your work on this, Representative Hurtas. In the author's amendment, I also included the date changes we talked about, and I appreciate the direction you're going with this, and we'll take this as a friendly amendment. Thank Great. you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Hurtas. Members, are there any other questions or comments on the A8 amendment? Um, not seeing any, if we could unmute for a moment and all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Um, so that's all the amendments that we have. So, um, oh, sorry. So next we will... Um, Move on to the, the author. I don't know if, if you have anything further to say on the bill or if we sort of covered it in uh, our Monday session. Um, I just wanted to open up for any other member questions folks might have. Great, are there any other members who have questions or comments on the division report as amended? Not seeing any. Um, I think I just saw Representative um, Hurtas on mute. Did you want to? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Representative Hurtas. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Representative Yuakim. I'll just uh, uh, mention that uh, this morning I had uh, conversations with some school districts on uh, funding and the uh, issue of the um, provisions on. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember which section it was, but the notification, uh, the Marquard provision uh, about the um, uh, local governments uh, providing the extra notice uh, came up as a concern uh, as being overly burdensome, but I just thought I'd pass that on and I, I know it's in the bill and uh, I don't have any more comments on it, but I just thought I would share that with you. Thank you, Representative Hurtas. Are there any further member questions or comments on the division report as amended? Uh, seeing none, uh, Chair Joachim, did you have any closing comments on the bill? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, members. We've done some really good work here, and I want to thank uh, nonpartisan staff for all the quick turnaround on the amendments. Um, we've included property tax relief to homeowners and renters. 
giving more flexibility to our cities to spur economic development, increase in affordable housing and increase in affordable housing and invest in energy improvement. We even have a little something in there for agricultural properties and veterans. So I think this is a good piece of legislation. And as we move forward to the tax committee, I would appreciate your support. Thank you, Chair Yuakim. Um, Chair Yuakim renews her motion that House File 1735, as amended, be referred to the Committee on Taxes. The clerk will take the roll. I'd just like to ask members quickly to, um, when, when the clerk calls your name, just say your name and your vote, and then he'll repeat it back. So please go ahead, Mr. Clerk. Chair Yuakim? Yuakim, yes. Yuakim, I. Vice Chair Gomez. Gomez, aye. Gomez, aye. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, aye. Hurtas, aye. Representative Anderson. Anderson, aye. Anderson, aye. Representative Becker Finn. Becker Finn, aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Fisher. Fisher, aye. Fisher, aye. Representative Green. Green, no. Green, no. Representative Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Her. Her, aye. Her, aye. Representative Marcourt. Marcourt, aye. Marcourt, aye. Representative Mortensen. Mortensen, no. Mortensen, no. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Torkelson. Aye. Torkelson, aye. That's 11 ayes and two nays, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thanks for um, making the, our roll call extra legit. Um, there being 11 ayes and two nays, the motion prevails and House File 1735, as amended, is referred to the Committee on Taxes. And I'm now going to turn the gavel back over to our chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, members, once again, I would like to thank you all for the work that you've done in the property tax division this session. I appreciate you hanging in there with me as we spent three days on local option sales taxes, a day on TIF provisions, and time on a variety of other pieces of legislation that are in this division report. While I gave specific thank yous on Monday, I would like to say thank you once again to House Media, House Research, as well as partisan and nonpartisan staff. And another big thank you to our committee administrator, Nathan Justin, and our CLA, Eric Peterson, for keeping us on track and informed. As for now, this will be our last property tax division meeting for this session, unless something comes up that requires our attention. Um, and before I adjourn, I want to see it uh, uh, as the minority lead, Representative Hurtas, if you wanted to add anything. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I uh, just wanted to uh, extend my thanks uh, to your committee administrator, uh, Mr. Jessen, uh, for being able to not only uh, crank out the uh, documents and materials uh, in a reasonably timely fashion, uh, as he has done both in this committee and tax committee, uh, but all, the, all of the other members uh, on both sides of the aisle here that uh, this is one committee that tends to be less partisan than uh, most committees. And uh, this is my ninth consecutive year serving in the property tax division and uh, appreciate uh, the collaboration that we uh, share on both sides of the aisle. I would uh, especially like to uh, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, for your outreach and uh, our uh, regular meetings uh, outside of committee just to talk about process and the things that were coming up. Uh, that's a true demonstration of bipartisanship on this subject matter, and uh, I am uh, deeply pleased by uh, your uh, activity as chair in uh, being inclusive of the minority on the things that we were moving forward. So to that, uh, thank you, members. Thank you, Representative Fertaz. I appreciate your collaboration as well. And with that, members, I'll give you some time back in your day, and we are adjourned.